but it appears that the Carbondale, Illinois police, the Jackson County coroner, and the state's attorney have all conspired to cover that up. It's very serious. Apparently, they want it to seem as if Carbondale is a safe place when, in reality, it isn't. And they do this to protect the enrollment of Southern Illinois University, which is central to the local economy. And please, hang on to this. Because there's some names on here that you need to have that are extremely important for you to succeed in getting this justice for Breedine. Hi. I'm Ira Robbins from the Archangels of Justice. Hi. Salvatore Rastrelli, the Archangel of Justice. And in the second part of their two-part video series, highlighting two cases that capture some of the many problems plaguing law enforcement today and the struggles that families face when seeking justice, Sal and Ira will discuss their experiences during the Praveen Varigase case. This is Intro to the Archangels Part 2, Praveen Varigase. But first, make sure you click the subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss any new content from the Archangels of Justice. Click, click, done. Praveen Varghese was a 22-year-old, I believe, college student in Carbondale, Illinois, going to SIU, Southern Illinois University. Praveen was a track star all through high school, avid runner and an athlete. As all college students, they go to parties from time to time. He went to a party one night. He run in, ran into an individual that we all found out later. His name was Gage Bethune. Well, at some point, he went for a ride with Gage and never returned back to his college dorm. The Carbondale Police Department found the body a couple of days later, although the family, uh, Praveen's mother and, and father and all family were concerned, the police department didn't seem that concerned whatsoever. Today, just two days after the first anniversary of Praveen's death, we are here and we weep. The pain this family has endured is unimaginable and has hurt them to their very core. To have your beautiful child taken away is something everyone should never experience. There is absolutely no doubt that Praveen did not die of natural causes he was murdered. That night, though, that he disappeared, Gage Bethune's truck was found on the side of the road by Illinois State Police Trooper Chris Martin. They failed at the beginning of Praveen's case. When that police officer, that state trooper, Chris Martin, stopped behind Gage Bethune's truck, his gut told him something was wrong. That's what we do as police officers. Something's wrong. My job is to stop and find out what it is. He stopped. And Gage Bethune came up from behind the patrol car, as you could see in the video, and talked with the trooper for a few minutes. You don't hear what's being said. I'll get to that in a little bit. At some point, you see the trooper standing on the police car, or on the side of the road next to his police car and the van and the Bethune's truck, with a flashlight. And he shines the flashlight out into the woods like this. Now, I've been to this scene twice. I did it once at night. I can walk through those woods at night, just like Praveen was supposedly had walked through those woods. And I did it again during the day. Now, there's no way that the officer searched those woods extensively as the spokesperson for Illinois State Police said he did. That's not a search. That's barely a cursory look. According to the trooper's report, which he wrote a week after, he didn't even write it that night, and according to his dispatch call, while he called it with an assist to a motorist, he never told the dispatcher that he had a possible carjacking in progress, which Bethune told him had happened, that there had been a fight and that he tried to get some money. And then that this black man ran off into the woods. As a former police officer with 25 years of experience in dealing with carjackers and robbers and things of this nature, his job would have been to say to Bethune, you just told me somebody tried to rob you. You're gonna have a seat in the back seat of my police car for a few minutes while I get some help here in this area because we need to find your alleged robber because we don't need him coming back out again 
and robbing someone else. Well, but you, but you had said was an absolute outright lie. If this police officer had done that job, guess what? We wouldn't be having this memorial today. You'd have found Prabhim. You'd have went to the hospital. Because Prabhim was not conscious. I don't care what the medical examiner from Carbondale and from Indiana had to say, Mr. Cooper and Dr. Jacoby. I was a crime scene expert for a number of years during my career, and I've seen plenty of people beaten severely. And when I saw the pictures of Prabhim from Dr. Margolis, it's turned to my stomach that the police in Carbondale and their supposed professional doctors would say there was no foul play. It took four days for the police to find Bethune's body, and it took them that long to find out that Chris Martin had been behind Bethune that night. That's how they knew where to go look for him, because the family put out a tip for money to anyone with information to please come forward and tell them what happened to their son. Well, someone did go to the police station. Someone that heard Beth Dune state when he saw on TV the missing person reward for information, Beth Dune began to throw up and state, that's the guy I beat up the other night. And that person went to the police station and told them about what Beth Dune had said. And in Praveen's case, they didn't even set a crime scene up in the woods. And their, their story was to the family, it was private property. My answer to that is, don't you ever heard the open field doctrine? You went out there without a, without a warrant. You went out, went out there without permission to search for a body. You found it. 19-year-old man, that's not a crime scene. And if you're so afraid that you can't conduct the crime scene search, then get the warrant if you need it. The family contacted the district or state's attorney, a guy named Michael Carr, as unethical and a piece of human debris as they come. And Carr made all kinds of derogatory remarks about Mrs. Verghese, lovely Verghese, saying that she was emotional and, and she didn't know this and didn't know that. Blame problems with this thing on Praveen Verghese. Jake, Jackson County State's Attorney Michael Carr has conspired with the Carbondale police to cover up his murder by pretending the false evidence he has received from the police and medical examiner is not true, even when he knows that it's false. By not questioning the many witnesses he has been made aware of and who have very important information concerning the actual murder, and by actively obstructing and attempting to assassinate the character of anyone seeking the truth. They got some kind of a medical examiner. They couldn't find a corrupt one in the area that, uh, of Carbondale. So they went to Indiana and got some goof to come in there, a medical examiner. In my opinion, Carr has conspired with the Jackson County coroner and the independent pathologist to falsify the causes of death of Praveen Verghese. The official death certificate states the cause of death was an accident. That is an absolute lie, and Carr knows it is. Anyone with or without medical experience or training could plainly see that Praveen had been beaten, and severely. There is absolutely no doubt about that. We have seen the photographs, and we have looked at the evidence. And the medical examiner said, now oh, this guy died of hypothermia. It got really cold. It was February. It was cold that night. He must have got lost in the woods and, and died. And they stuck to that story and stuck to that story for years. But Carr has closed Praveen's case without even interviewing important witnesses who have very good information about the murderer. And it appears that he lied when he claimed there was a pending investigation in order to withhold documents and reports that Praveen's family <coughs> had requested and according to the law were entitled to receive. Only now, a year after Praveen's death, and since Archangels of Justice has been reporting Carr's improper conduct, <coughs> has he finally decided to release Praveen's reports to this family. They, uh, with the family arguing and, and causing, uh, you know, asking a lot of questions, 
or Michael Carr had a grand jury convened, but he only presented the evidence that he wanted to present, and there were no uh, murder charges issued against Bethune at all. Praveen's family are medical professionals, and when they finally saw, saw their son's body in a funeral home before he was embalmed and prepared for burial, they saw the bruises on his head, his arms, and leg. They, in turn, hired the medical examiner out of Chicago, Illinois, who has done thousands of autopsies to autopsy their son a second time. And guess what he said? He said this young man died from blunt force trauma, but that he lived for a few hours laying out there. And between the combination of the extreme cold and the blunt force, it will cause him to die. So what we had was a homicide. Kerr insinuated that Praveen's mother, Lovely, didn't know what she was talking about when she pushed him for answers about his refusal to thoroughly investigate her son's death. And uh, the Varagase family contacted the Archangels of Justice. I went there and met with the uh, lovely Varagase, the mother and the family, the father and other relatives. And uh, I got involved and Sal came down and we conducted an investigation there. And we went to those very woods a day later, a year after on the anniversary. I walked out into those woods where his body marker was. The family had set up a little thing. So I knew where his body had been found. Later that day, I said to Ira, let's go back out there at night. About the same time that he got lost in the woods. I walked out into those woods all the way back to where his body was found. And standing there, I looked in one direction. And I could see the lights of a nearby shopping center that was there when Praveen was in those woods that night, being beaten. I looked over my other shoulder, and I could see the road that I just had walked in from as cars would go by. I was back there a couple hundred yards, but I wasn't lost. I didn't have a flashlight, but I could see cars drive by with their lights as they went by. So Praveen, if he was not knocked unconscious, would have never been lost in the woods, as they claimed. And we found that the policeman from the Illinois State uh, Police was absolutely a liar. He had, he had written his report and tried to blame everything, make up a story to cover his own butt. And we found that uh, the medical examiner from Indiana had lied. Um, the the uh, Varagas family had a second autopsy. Uh, there were Praveen was uh, beaten with some object, had blunt force trauma, had injuries all over his body, and they denied it ever, it, that he did. And uh, they started berating the medical examiner, Dr. Ben Margola, Margolis. So for years, this went on and on. Ira and I wrote an affidavit, a lengthy affidavit covering every iota of the case, delivered it to the Department of Justice, then the FBI. And guess what? It was minimized and ignored, minimized and ignored. They had little special counsel meetings between the state attorney, Mike Carr, from Jackson County in Carbondale, and another one by the name of Ed Parkinson. And they kept saying, oh, this is not a murder. This is just a horrible accident. We're sorry. There's nothing we can do about it. So ultimately, Sal and I came in there. We started demonstrations. And I put a, so did Sal, put a substantial uh, amount of YouTube uh, videos berating and, and pointing out to everybody how corrupt State Attorney Michael Carr was. Now, because of Carr's refusal to admit that Praveen and other obvious victims were murdered, and apparently directing these cover-ups in both of the cases, the killers are free to walk the streets in Carbondale. And the families that send their children to Southern Illinois University at Carbondale are unknowingly putting them in harm's way. How many more of our precious children will be killed? How do we stop it from happening? 
the fight continued. The family fought. We fought. We posted podcast after podcast and video after video. Finally, a special prosecutor was appointed, not from that corrupt area. And guess what happened last year? After a four-year wait, Beth Dune was indicted for first-degree murder and admitted that he had beat Praveen. He was convicted just a few days ago of first-degree murder. They go out of their way to berate everybody that questions them and try to put it in a context that it was the victim's fault or the family's nuts and not do their jobs. The Varagay's family, lovely Varagay's, the nicest people you'll ever find. And it was really a joy to be able to help them and all the people that were supporting us. So when Ira and I say the police have, are incompetent in some cases, or corrupt, or a combination of both, there's a reason for it. Ira and I have over 80 years of experience combined between us in law enforcement and as independent investigative consultants and expert witnesses. And if we say something's wrong with a case, you can bet your bottom dollar there's something wrong with that case. Ira and I were both public servants. When you paid your tax dollars to pay us to work, and we worked, and we found the bad guys, and we helped the good people that needed help. Today, we're still public servants, and we do this for free. We're not charging anybody for this, because we're so disgusted with what we're seeing in law enforcement today and the cover-ups, and everybody's on being politically correct. It needs to end, and it's up to you, the American citizen, to put it in. You have the power to vote. You have the power to put these people out of business, because all they're doing is taking a paycheck, and they're not doing their job. So if anybody asks you who your congressmen are and your state representatives are, you have a list for this state. And we plan on doing this in every state that we go to. And we're on the run going to be doing just that. Thank you very much. Now, it's not all we're going to be doing. This particular, two particular cases, Angel's case and Praveen's case, will be highlighted in its entirety on podcasts, which we will cover for you. I just want you to highlight these for you to understand what it is Ira and I do. And stay tuned because Sal and I have many more cases pending. You can check on YouTube the uh Angel Seiler or Praveen Varghese cases and uh, take a look at what Archangels of Justice has posted and, and how aggressive we were in trying to break this case, which we eventually did. We do not want to see victims victimized and their families victimized with no recourse when police shut them down. We've got 50 more cases just like this, and we're working on a few right now that I'm not going to mention that are coming close to a change from accidents and suicides to murder very soon. We're also going to be doing a series of podcasts on various other topics. I'm putting one out that's going to probably be a several series on how to protect yourself, self-defense. We'll be putting videos out about corruption. We'll put videotapes and podcasts out about how not to be victimized by a criminal justice system that's not working for you. Whether you are about to be a defendant or you're about to be a for family of a defendant or a victim. Stay tuned to our channel. You will also see on this video a couple of short videos of Ira and I where we presented public information to Angel Siler's community. 
while we were in Susanville, and also a clip of, of us where we were in Illinois giving a uh, speech to the community there as well. Both of these cases had an extremely foul, hard following and a lot of notoriety in the press and on news stations and radio stations because people knew there was something wrong with their police department and nobody would change it. And their prosecutor covered it up and it had to stop. That was in both cases, Angels and Praveen's. And the other cases we're working on, we're fighting the same corrupt systems and we will continue that fight. Stay tuned to us. Visit us on our archangels.com archangelsofjustice.com and our Facebook pages. Thank you very much. Do you have any thoughts on the subject? Let us know in the comments below or reach out to us on Twitter and Facebook. If you want more content, you can check out our website, archangelsofjustice.com, which is updated weekly. You can also sign up for our monthly newsletter. Thank you for watching this latest entry from Archangels of Justice, and we hope to see you back here soon.